look at what is in the bulletin, we usually have more details about uh, things that are going on, and I kind of just give a little overview. But the first one that I want to remind you of is that a picture of one of your pets with you. Um, also, if you've recently had a pet that has died, um, we would love to be able to bless you um, and their memory, so you can bring a picture of them as well. I know we will be bringing a picture next Sunday of our dog patches who we lost uh, last winter. So um, feel free to do whatever works for you. Um, the other announcements I have for you is that um, my Bible study is continuing on Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Um, we are moving on to another country in our Christianity and other culture cultures series. We will be moving on to Haiti, and uh, that will start this Thursday. We'll be doing that for a couple of weeks, and then we'll be moving on to our final country. This past Thursday, we wrapped up our uh, focus on Israel and Palestine with some special guests. In fact, at one point during the Bible study, um, we had folks joining us from four continents, which is pretty amazing. We had someone in Europe, Asia, Africa, and then of course us here in North America. Um, we did not think that that session was going to be able to be recorded um, just because some of the folks participated. However, at the last minute, we got permission. And so if you go to the church uh, Facebook page, you can actually access that video recording of Thursday's Bible study and hear some of the conversation that went on. I'm also going to see if I can download it and get it up on our website and YouTube channel as well and get that link out to folks who uh, had to miss it this past Thursday. Um, we still have a few uh, events left, or items left from our Vacation Bible School um, event a couple of weeks ago. If you loan us something for BBS and you're still looking to get it back, let us know. Um, we can pull those items out. If you are leaving the items that you lend to us for us to use, let us know that too so we can find a home for them more permanently. Um, next week is the last week we'll have those. After that, we'll be packing things up and putting them away. Um, and we'll consider that a donation to the church, so keep that in mind as well. Um, again, just a reminder that worship is available online. We're trying to get it out uh, earlier and earlier every week, just having some issues with the platforms that we use um, to upload things. So just be patient um, that we're getting it out as quickly as we can um, for folks to see. I was told that if you wait until it gets up on our YouTube channel, it's actually closed caption. So uh, if you're having trouble hearing, you will be able to read what's being spoken as well. So kind of a lucky accident with that. So as we continue with worship, I invite you to just prepare your hearts and minds for worship by listening to our gathering from today. Morning has broken. Thank you. 
Lord Tennyson's Move Eastward, Happy Earth, and Leave. Move Eastward, Happy Earth, and Leave, your sunset waning slow. From fringes of the faded ink, O happy planet, eastward go. To lower thy dark shoulder glow, thy footprints soar and part. To bless yourself and to the eyes that watch me from the glen below. Bear me, bear me with thee, smoothly worn. Dip forward under starry light, and move me to my marriage morn, and round again to happy night. This is one story of earth, but to God we give the glory. Amen. A reading from the story of creation found in the book of Genesis. The reading begins, And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. This is a story of God's creation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah. 
those problems with a little something else. So, so all you folks who are our youngest folks who are feeling young at heart, I want you to just listen up for a second. So during the Bible study for today, Jesus is talking about planting seeds and how the soil it's planted in can make a difference in how it grows. So, if you are planting something and you sprinkle seeds all over the ground, well, they're not going to grow into anything. They're going to get eaten by the birds, especially if you do that at my house. We have three chickens who I know would love to get their hands on some, some bird seed. So we know that if we just toss the seeds out, something's going to eat them. If we take seeds and we plant them on rocks, well, the roots don't have anything to latch hold of, and they are really weak, and eventually the plant just dies because it doesn't have anything to grow in, really. If we plant seeds with a whole bunch of weeds, well, the weeds tend to be really strong, and they can kill the plants by taking all of the water and the nutrients and even squeezing onto their roots. So nothing grows. But if we plant seeds in really healthy, good soil, those seeds will grow into plants, and if all goes well, they'll be very healthy, especially if we take care of them. Every time we hear that God loves us or Jesus loves us, a little seed gets planted in our hearts. And if we make sure that the soil it gets planted in, in our person, is really, really good and healthy, then that seed will grow to be a plant that is big and strong. We have to take care of it so that other people will see the amazing things that we can do if we have God's love in our hearts. So at the end of worship today, what I am going to do is I'm going to be in the back for all of our kiddos to come and meet me, and I have some wildflower seeds that we're going to plant in the soil that we are going to be collecting from folks today. And we can plant even more seeds later on if we get more soil from folks next week. But we are going to plant them in good soil so that we can share them with everyone else. We're going to keep checking on them every week. When you come, you can come see me and we'll check and see how they're doing and see if they're growing. We'll make sure that they have water. It's terrible because at some point in our lives, we probably all planted a seed. Raise your hand if you've ever planted a seed and produce more fruit and more seeds. You probably also planted things that um, maybe haven't done so well. You all know that. Those of you who say you have a black thumb, you know who you are. I'm going to have to call you out. You're the one that has lots of fake houseplants in your house, right? I have to tell you, though, that recently, Rico and I have we've lived out this parable of, of planting things uh, in soil that maybe wasn't the best. So I just want to tell you that so you know you too can live out the story if you uh, forget things like we did. So we went to, when, the last time we went to Washington, we brought back with us the cuttings from uh, the dusty Miller plants that grew uh, all over the campus of my last church. They were everywhere. If you're not familiar with what a dusty Miller is, it's sort of that gray, fuzzy plant, not lamb's ears, but uh, a little bit more variegated than that. And it's gray and fuzzy, and then it gets a yellow flower that sort of looks like little yellow pom-poms the size of a great pencil eraser. They're really cool, and I've seen them growing in lots of different places. We know they, they do grow in Texas if you take good care of them. They can be a little bit finicky in this hot, dry weather sometimes. Thankfully, it has not been a very hot and dry year, so our dressing miller has done very well. Those cuttings have grown into, had grown, into quite a large bush. And so at one point, we had to transplant it into something bigger. We know about putting layers in the soil, having rocks at the bottom for drainage, and then sand, and then soil, and putting fertilizer, and having stakes to help them grow and be strong as they spread out. And they seem to be doing really, really well. But, but since we transplanted it, it kind of went downhill a little bit. We had a little bit of a trouble with bugs. And so we thought we got rid of those. We used a little pesticide and got rid of them. And seemed to be okay. And then, then I noticed the other day, I said, you know, freak you up. I'm really thinking we should probably take some cuttings. So we took some cuttings off, and they were doing really well in the little pots we had them in. But the big plant was getting, well, it didn't look so great. And so the other day, I went to check and pull off some of the dead things that were on it. And 
what I did, the whole entire plant just lifted right out of the soil. It had hardly any roots at all. And I couldn't figure out what the problem was. Like, this is dead. I don't think it's dead. I'm so glad we took cutting to do it lost it entirely. So we'll get rid of it. Go dump it out in the compost pile in the backyard. So he takes it out and he comes back in and he says, well, I know what was wrong with it. What? Well, it was full of water in the bottom and mold and mildew. You see, we had forgotten to put holes in the bottom of the pot to help it drain. So the water just pooled in the bottom and the roots slowly rotted because they didn't have anywhere to go and they had nothing to stick into. They just went into a puddle at the bottom with no nourishment at all. So sadly, our large dusty miller bush has gone to the great garden in the sky. But thankfully, we kept those cuttings. You see, the reason I'm telling you this is because even when we know the story, or in my case, even when you study horticulture, and you think you're doing everything right, things can end up not working out the way you thought they would. Or in the case of our dust and plant, things can end up in the compost pile. I'm certainly very thankful that we took cuttings so we can have another chance to try again. In fact, we have eight chances because we took eight cuttings. You see, that's the part that we tend to miss here in today's story from Matthew's Gospel. It's the second chance. God gives us the command to do something in God's holy kingdom. And we think we're doing things the way God would like. We think we are speaking and behaving in a way that makes Jesus proud of us. We assume we're doing the right thing in the right way. And then somehow it doesn't turn out the way we thought it might turn out. Somewhere along the way, we got distracted or made a mistake or forgot to put holes in the bottom of the planter. And then before we know it, the seeds have been eaten by birds or dried up by the sun or strangled by the weeds or covered in mold and mildew. You see, that's the incredible thing about knowing Jesus. The seeds of forgiveness and grace that have been planted in each of our hearts God's love is not just undeserved, it's also unconditional. There's nothing we can do to keep God from loving us. And God knows we're nowhere near perfect. We make mistakes. We make bad choices. We get frozen with fear. We forget who we are. We don't love our neighbors. We don't love ourselves. And so on. And then... Jesus. Jesus plants the seeds of forgiveness and grace and mercy and hope and peace and joy and love. Whether we get it right the first time or whether it takes us hundreds of tries to get it right, Jesus is there with us every single time, in every single mistake, in every single way. And when he is there with us, he is continually loving us deeply forgiving us daily, and offering us grace and mercy over and over and over again. You see, we keep making mistakes, and yet He keeps standing by our side. We keep saying and doing the wrong things, and yet He never gives up on us. We keep forgetting Jesus' commands to love our neighbor, and He keeps giving us more chances to love our neighbor and ourselves than we could ever have. Listen closely to today's parable. Jesus doesn't share the parable of the sower and the single seed. It's the parable of the seeds, plural. That means more than one seed. In fact, many more than just one seed. The sower in the story sows seeds in multiple different places, again and again and again, looking for better places to plant those seeds. There is more than one opportunity for the sower of the seeds to make a better choice. And that applies to us as well. We have more than one opportunity to show God that we are trying to do the right thing. And not just any God. The God of the New Testament. The God who forgives us. The God who loves us unconditionally. The God who gives us Jesus. 
the God who shares with us an unlimited supply of second chances. Some days, we plant seeds on the bare ground. Some days, we plant the seeds amongst the rocks. Some days, we plant them with weeds. And when those things happen, nothing grows, or if it does grow, nothing's strong, and nothing is equal. But despite that, Jesus doesn't give up on us. God doesn't give up on us. Because God loves us. And God gives us Jesus to love us too. And God keeps handing us more seeds. God has an unlimited supply of seeds for us. Just as God has an unlimited supply of love for us. God keeps giving us more chances to plant the seeds of love in good, rich soil. Because we are worthy of second chances and third chances and fourth chances and so on without any limits. Unlimited chances, unlimited forgiveness, and unlimited love. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he never ran out of bread or fish. In fact, he had bread and fish left over. And when Jesus went to the wedding in Canaan, when his mother came and said, look, we're running low on wine, this needs to be a good party, Jesus made sure that they never ran out of good wine. And he is not going to let us run out of seeds either. We will keep getting opportunities to plant the seeds of faith, hope, and love in the hearts of others. And sometimes those seeds will take, and sometimes they won't. But we have to keep trying. There are plenty of seeds to go around, and there are plenty of people for us to plant those seeds in our hearts. And that's why we're collecting the soil today. That's where this comes in, about having a, a bunch of our soil from other places all mixed in together in a pot to grow something. And that's to help us remember that we don't have to do this alone. Oh, in the story, the sower seems to be on his own, but, but that is not how it works in the Bible. That is not what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus does not call us to do all of his work independently. He does not call us to do this work on our own. Because Jesus didn't do this work alone. Jesus had the faith of his Father. He had the whispers of the Holy Spirit. And he had the disciples. And they had each other. Jesus doesn't expect us to plant all the seeds in the global mission field all by ourselves. Jesus wants us to work together and to use our different gifts to cultivate the kind of soil that can grow and sustain a healthy and strong faith. The kind of faith that can survive all the challenges that life can, does, and will throw at us. Just as the soil in our gardens and our yards is very, very different for each of us, we also each bring different gifts to serving God's kingdom. What one of us is really good at is a challenge for someone else. And the person who is challenged by one man may be amazing at something completely different. One container of soil that you may have brought from your house is filled with lots of fertilizer. But maybe someone else has really good bugs that are good at taking care of pests. And maybe someone else's is amazing at holding moisture. Maybe someone else's has amazing nutrients that are great for growing flowers. You may be good at one thing, while someone else is good at another. And that's exactly why we are better together. We are a church as people. We are a stronger faith community when we work together and embrace one another's differences and embrace one another's gifts. We are a stronger faith community when we remember to offer new opportunities and second chances to others in the same way that God repeatedly offers them to us. We are a stronger faith community when we keep planting the seeds of God's love for us and others through Jesus Christ. 
knowing that sometimes the seeds grow into healthy and fruitful plants, and other times, well, not so much. And reminding ourselves to never give up, to keep trying again and again and again. Friends, the mission field is ready. God has provided us with an unlimited supply of seeds, and Jesus has given us the courage to keep planting, even when we know that some of those seeds will not grow into anything at all. But it is not for us to know which seeds will succeed and which seeds will not. It is for us to keep trying. So may we see all of God's children as worthy soil, ready and waiting in seeds of faith that we plant in them each and every day and we remind them of God's love. And may we see ourselves as deserving of this task always. And let all God's people say, Amen. I invite you to ponder the scripture and this message and the Holy Spirit's whisperings to you as we listen to our hymn of the day, Happy Thank the Lord. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in 
life, such as new jobs, new schools, or new communities. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time we continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. I also want you, if you brought soil with you today, to uh, make sure that that is uh, also given in. Now that doesn't, the soil does not go in the offering plate. It goes into the metal bin um, that will be coming around as well. So um, make sure you put that in there. Um, let me know after worship if you need your container back for some reason, and we'll make sure we do that. Um, but go ahead and put that soil in there and know that we'll be using it um, for worship. If you didn't bring your soil today, that's okay. Um, bring it by later this week, or you can bring it to church next Sunday. We will make sure that it gets used for sure.
Jesus, bread of life. We have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and grant you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending